Welcome to ECLIMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed types of charges and we said we have only two types of charges. We have positive charges and negative charges. We also looked at how we can make a material to become positively charged and we said for a material to be positively charged, then we subtract some electrons from that material which is electrically neutral and in that way the number of protons will be more than the electrons which we have subtracted then in this case we will obtain a positively charged material so for us to obtain negatively charged material then we will add electrons to that material and in that case since the number of protons have not changed then there will be more electrons than protons and that material will be said to be uh, negatively charged. Now in this lesson we are going to discuss how the positive charges and the negative charges interact in what we call the basic law of electrostatics. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy this video. By the end of this lesson I expect you to be able to explain and state the law of electrostatics, then explain what conductors are, and then finally explain what initiators are. So we obtain the basic law of electrostatics by observing the behavior when we bring together the two types of charges. So in this case, if we bring a material which is positively charged, this one is positively charged, it means we are, it has lost some electrons. Then you bring it close to another material which is also positively charged, a material which has lost some electrons. What you will realize, these two materials will repel each other. These two materials will repel each other and they will move away from each other. So here there will be a repulsion. And then if you bring a material which is negative recharge. Remember, negative recharge material, it means you add the directions to this material and then close to a material which is also negative recharge. And then in this case also, there will be a repulsion. There will be a repulsion. They will move away from each other. There will be a repulsion. But now, if you bring a material which is positive recharged, the one that has lost some electrons, and then you have another material which is negatively charged, the one that electrons have been added to it, what you will realize, these two materials will attract and stick to one another. So here, there will be attraction. So from this one, what we will realize is that the first two materials, they have same charges. So this one, we call them like charges. Like charges. So in this case, when the charges are alike, positive and positive, they will repel. Negative and negative, they will repel. But when you have unlike charges, in this case, these are unlike charges, the last part here, unlike charges. So this setup one, two, three. Setup three is the one which contains unlike charges, positive and negative. In this case, they will attract. And then from this one, that's where we come up with the basic law of electrostatic, which states that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. So if you have charges which are alike, positive and positive, they will repel. Negative and negative, they will repel. But if you have opposite charges, that is positive and negative charges, when you bring the bodies close together, they will attract. So you can perform this experiment simply by hanging um, a material which is negatively charged. If you take a material which is negatively charged and then you hang it using this thread, it's a thread here, and then this is a material which is negatively charged, like that. So if you bring another material here, which is also negatively charged, what you will realize, this material which is hung or which can swing freely, will move away will move away from the material which you are introducing. So in this case, repansion will take place. 
So here we will have repulsion because the two materials have like charges. Then if you bring now or you hang the same material here, which has uh, positive charges, in this case we have a material here which has positive charges, so it means this material lost some of the electrons. And then you introduce another material which also has positive charges. What you realize also here, this material which is uh, swinging freely on this thread will also move away. It will move away. So it means also here there will be a repansion which will take place. There will be a repansion here. One material will move up, then this one will be repelled. So there will be a repansion. However, if you hang the same material now here, you hang a material here, which is uh, positively charged, a material which is positively charged, and then now you introduce a material which is negatively charged. You introduce a material which has opposite charge. In this case, what you will realize, this material will move close to the material that you are introducing. So here it will move move close so here it will move close and when it moves close it means here there will be attraction this one will attract this and this one will attract the other so here there will be attraction so in these setups setup one setup two and setup three in the first two cases when you have two materials which have the same charge the negative and negative there will be a repansion positive and positive there will be a repansion and this is what we call uh, like charges. When you have like charges, like charges, there will be a repansion. And then the last setup, that is setup three, you are introducing unlike charges. So here you have unlike charges. And when you have unlike charges, attraction will take place. And that is what in simple terms we call the basic law of electrostatics. So we can use the idea of charging to distinguish between good conductors and insulators of electricity. And good conductors are defined as materials which allows electrons to pass easily through them. So those materials, we call them conductors. Now we have substances which does not allow electrons to pass freely through them and we call those materials insulators. Now, the reason why conductors conduct electricity, almost metals conduct electricity, is because whenever you have a conductor, let's say this is a metal, on its surface, it has what we call atoms. And these atoms, we say, inside we have a nuclear which is very small, and it contains protons, which are positively charged. Then, on the outer surface, we have electrons which are negatively charged. So the electrons which are very close to the nu nuclear, which is positively charged, will be strongly attracted to the nuclear because unlike charges attract. However, we have electrons which are very far away from the nuclear, and this electron will be loosely attracted because as you move away from the nuclear, the force of attraction will be decreasing. So the electrons which are very far away from the nuclear will be loosely attracted and therefore they will be free to move on the conductor surface and those are the ones which are responsible for conductivity of uh, material. So most metals conduct electricity because they have these uh, free electrons. We call them free electrons. Electrons which can wander or which can move freely on the surface of the conductor and conduct electricity. Now, we can set up an experiment to determine the good conductors and poor conductors. And if you want to do this experiment, then what you do, you will take a metallic conductor. A metallic conductor, remember, we said it has atoms and these atoms are electrically neutral. Let's say, they are like this, positives, number of positives are equal to the number of electrons. And therefore, in this case, if you take a hand and hold this 
a metallic conductor you hold this metallic conductor this is your hand let me try to draw a hand here so this one is your hand let me call it a hand and then you take a cotton wool you take a cotton wool and wrap the surface of this metallic conductor this is a cotton wool this wool if you wrap the surface of this conductor remember we said wool when you wrap wool and another material the wool will become positive recharged positive recharged it means it will lose some of the electrons from this wool will be moved into the surface of this metallic conductor however immediately these electrons are produced or move or they are conducted from this cotton wool all have been lost by this cotton wool to the conductor these electrons will immediately move through the end these electrons will move through the end and then they will go to the ground because a hand is a good conductor a hand is a good conductor it can conduct electrons easily to the ground so in this case this material will not be charged at all this material will not be charged because immediately it gains electrons from the cotton wool the same electrons are conducted through the hand to the other surface so in this case uh, this material or this metal uh, conductor is a good conductor because it can move electrons from the material or from the cotton wool through the material and then it can conduct the same electrons through the hand to the other surface however if you want to use the same same idea to test the uh, initiating property of materials then you will take the same same uh, metal conductor which is positively and negatively charged like this which is a, a electrically neutral and then now instead of holding this metal conductor directly with your hand now you will use an insulator you will use a, a plastic a plastic this is a plastic handle you use a plastic handle and then now you will hold at the end of this plastic handle this is where your hand is this is now your hand which is on top of this plastic handle now then now what you do you take the same cotton wool which you had this cotton wool now this is the wool this wool now you wrap it when you are wrapping it you are making the electrons to gain kinetic energy therefore some of the electrons will be conducted from the or will be transferred from the cotton wool to the metallic surface but now when these electrons have been conducted from the cotton wool to the metallic surface they cannot be conducted through this plastic handle because plastic is a poor conductor or is an insulator of electrons it cannot allow electrons to move freely through this plastic handle to the hand so in this case uh, this plastic is a good example of an insulator an insulator because it cannot allow the electrons which are produced by this cotton wool to move through the conductor to the hand so it will not move through the hand because of this a uh, plastic material which is an insulator so at the end of this case you will realize that the metal rod in this case here this case two the metal rod in this case will become negatively charged negatively charged because the, it had equal number of protons initially with, with the same equal number of electrons three three but now the cotton wool has added more electrons here so this metal rod will become or will gain negatively negatively charged it will become negatively charged because the electrons which are transferred from the cotton wool cannot be moved out of this conductor because this plastic handle is an insulator but in the first setup the material will not be charged because immediately the electrons move into the conducting surface or this conductor or the same electrons will be transferred through the hand to the at the surface and therefore this material will remain electrically neutral so in this case you have used the idea of a material which is charged if it if, if this material become charged then it means the material which you are holding with your hand is an insulator therefore the number of electrons which will be gained cannot be moved out of that material but if the material is not charged like in the first case here it means the 
electrons which are gained from the wool will immediately be conducted through the hand to the at the surface. Therefore, it means here this material together with the hand are good conductors. That's why the electrons which are produced cannot stay in the material. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will look at charging materials by contact, induction, and by separation method.